All right, what's up, everyone? This is Don Wynn with BlueFirePoker.com. Uh, last week, or it might not be last week now, but last week I did make the videos and the audio for uh, playing a, a more tight, aggressive, straightforward style that I think is better for um, starting and intermediate players rather than kind of the loose, aggressive style that I've been doing in videos. So I'm going to continue that here and make um, a two part two part video of me playing the same session at 50 and L so hopefully you guys will enjoy that uh, I'm gonna start the video now and pause as I usually do during any interesting spots Uh, okay, so pocket eights, and I don't have too many reads on him so far, except he, after the very small sample size, which we can't really put too much faith in that information, but we can use it to kind of postulate that he may be on the aggressive side. He's isolating a limper. He's been playing 46-31 with 20% three-bet stats so far, so he probably on the aggressive side he may not be he just might be running hot during that sample size too I think this is going to be a fairly standard call from the small blind I don't like three betting here and then if you four bets having to get it in I don't like three bet and folding with this particular hand so I think it's a really really standard call with pocket eights in this spot So yeah, go ahead and call. In the bottom left, there's some interesting hand too. There's actually three hands going on here. I'm isolating um, as well on the bottom right. And let's talk about all these hands. So on the bottom left, um, under the gun plus one flats, I think a lot of flatting range is going to be hands like king queen, king jack, um, eight nine, nine ten, five six, six seven and then small pairs. So I think he's going to be continuing a bit on this board on the bottom left here. Uh, with all his pairs, any eight, any flush draw, and then he's probably going to fold some of his Broadway cards. So I think it's a pretty good spot to bet because if I checked, I'd probably be check folding. The matter of position rests the hand. So I really am betting here to protect my hand against like I don't know, jack-10, that type of hand, um, to set up bluffing situations if he's calling with hands like pocket fives, and basically pre preventing myself from check-folding this flop. On the bottom right, I isolate and flop top and bottom pair, and no way I'm getting away from it. Pretty much going to bet he's usually going to fold here uh, in this spot. So far, he's been playing 47-20. So he's probably raising most of his ASEX hands. So I really don't expect him to continue here too often. But in order to build a pot, I really need to be betting. And then in the top left, um, I flopped like the top boat, second knot. So, and I wasn't the pre-flop raiser. So there's really no reason to lead here. I basically have the board crushed. Um, I'm stacking a six at any point anyway. So... I really want to check, let people bluff, and probably check call. And if it gets checked through, hopefully like an ace, a king, a queen will hit the turn or something like that where someone will flop or turn a pair and then hopefully pay off two streets. So I'm definitely checking in this spot with uh, the second nuts. So on the bottom two tables, it did in fact... Uh, they did in fact fold. So Eagle PX, he isolated. We estimate that he's going to be a pretty aggressive player here. 866, somewhat innocuous board. Um, the three of us aren't going to have too much. So, like Sometimes we have gutters, sometimes we have 7-9, 7 sometimes we have 8s, but uh, players at 50 NL, especially aggressive ones, whenever they have the preflop lead, basically see bet too much so I'm not that surprised that he's betting into three other players here uh, probably a small leak to just 
bet this board every time with his entire range. If he is doing that, if he has an overpair, then I mean he's uh, it's definitely fine to bet. Uh, since I think most of his range here, since he is isolating a fish and and it came eight six six, I think he has air usually. Check calling is going to be totally standard. If I check raise here, he's folding almost every time. Two hits a turn. It's not a good turn for me because unless they have pocket deuces, that doesn't improve any of their holdings. So I think I think for the most part, it's going to get checked through in this spot every time unless Eagle PX uh, has an overpair, which he'll probably bet. He might check those hands back too once he gets called in two spots, but uh, it's probably going to get checked through usually. I'm going to lead the river, and if anyone has... If they pick up a pair on the river, or if they have like pocket nines, pocket tens, any over pair, they're probably going to pay off, and that's the way this hand is usually going to play out. Um, I think checking here is probably best as well, because it it gives me a chance to really stack Eagle PX. I think because if he bets here again, I think for the most part he's going to have um, an over pair that he probably won't be able to get away from. If I lead, he just calls with those hands, so I, I don't get to stack them. So I think checking is probably best. I really doubt he's double barreling air when two people call on that flop, though. And the five hits, which is kind of a cool card because seven nine, um, seven nine got there. So I'll probably be able to stack anyone with the straight in this spot. Um, when the Brett overcalls behind, I really think he's going to be showing up with a uh, hand like pocket sevens, pocket nines, hopefully the straight because I'll get to stack them. So I decided to overbet here because on the flop, when Eagle PX um, bets and I call, like, the Brit's not going to be able to just call at that point with King Queen anymore because my call is going to be pretty strong on average. Uh, he is kind of on the fishy side, so I really think when he when he uh, over calls that he's going to really show up with a six a ton of the time, or uh, a hand like maybe like pocket nines, pocket tens, or like ace eight. And since he probably overvalues all those hands, since he overcalled anyway. Uh, I think he's going to pay off a big bet just as often as I bet $15 here. So if I bet $15 versus $26, i am gaining additional um, 24 big blinds every time he calls. And I think it's not going to change his calling frequencies too much, so I opt for the over bet. He does call, and I don't remember what his hand was. He had, it should show up here in just a second, pocket nine, so um, I think the, the hand was fine, uh, standard on my part, or not standard, I think the standard is just about 15 there, but I think the reasons for the over bet are good ones, and consider spots like that. Uh, on the bottom left here, I am going to be isolating. In just a second, I'm almost 98% positive of that. On the bottom right, it's kind of interesting here. Uh, I don't have any reads on Luton. I open under the gun, so my range is going to be pretty strong. He three bets under the gun plus one, which is really, really strong. So I really give him credit for a pretty strong hand here. I hope I fold. I think folding is going to be the correct play. Um, I think it's really spewy to um, four bet get it in. I think it's oh, I, yeah, I did it. I don't like it though. Like when he op or when he three bets from that position because my range is already so tight. I think this is going to be a slightly losing play. I think folding is uh, probably the best. Calling the second best. Four betting probably the the worst because anytime he five bets here. I mean, I can't fold when I 4-bet ace-queen from this spot. So I'm doing okay against the range, but I think it's going to be negative V to 4-bet to in the first place. So um, certainly a mistake. I'm not sure why I did it, but um, don't do that. 
I'm really overplaying my hand there. He does fold, so uh, maybe I did make a good play. <laughs> no, but yeah, that was that wasn't a good play. Uh, I definitely don't recommend doing it. On the top left, Eagle PX, the aggressive player, opens from early position. I have Ace King suited. This is a hand in which I feel that sometimes I can flat. Sometimes I can 3-bet. If a more aggressive players were behind me, I'd feel more inclined to to call, let them squeeze, and then 4-bet. Um, but there's a 9-6 player, 13-6 player behind. Um, I guess the Brit is kind of on the aggro side, but it's a lot less likely I get squeezed here. So I think, I think just 3-betting for value is probably the best play. On a queen 5-6, Aussie board, like when he calls, when he calls preflop, um, I don't really know how, like, positionally where he is, but I think he's going to have something legitimate here, like pocket tens, pocket jacks, ace queen, king queen suited, something like that. I'm not going to get too many folds on this board. Um, if he's calling with hands like ace jack or Ten jack suited, all those hands I can show down against. Um, I don't think I get too many folds on this board, so checking is okay. Betting is also okay. Like if I bet here, I think betting seven dollars is gonna be okay. But I I really think checking is the best. Um, I hit the ace on the turn, and again I have an option like. Betting is certainly the standard, but when I check back that flop, um, my my range is going to look like a lot like ace king or pocket jacks or something like that. So when I do bet the turn, I think it gives my hand away a ton. So I could check back and go for one straight of value on the river, which is pretty good. I think he pays off a lot more on the river than on the turn. When he leads here, it's going to be um, super standard call. I'm not like. When he leads here, it's going to be a bluff. It's going to be ace jack, ace queen. So um, there's no reason to blow him off his bluffs. There's uh, little value in ace jack. He might even fold that hand. And then ace queen, I kind of lose the minimum. So I think calling here is going to be the uh, the best play. Nine hits the river. And let's see what he does. It's going to be kind of interesting. He bets 20. I think it's going to be, with $12 behind, it's just going to be a call. Um, he might not even be betting ace-jack again when I call the turn. He probably is betting, and then he's going to have ace-jack, ace-queen, and then ace-king. So I think, I don't think there's too much value in arrays, so calling, again, probably the standard. He does have ace-queen. Hooray for him. If I knew him a little bit better, equal PX, um, I could fold that river in some occasions, but I don't really know him too well, so I mean, I'm pretty much calling there every time against that unknown. Um, King 4 offsuit is, on the bottom right, is a hand that I occasionally open um, against weaker players, but like I mentioned in the uh, first part of this series, I guess the 25 and L part, like I just never opened it when I was coming up. So I'm going to I'm gonna play a lot tighter um, for late position. I'm still going to play positionally aware, but I'm not going to make a lot of loose opens uh, while I'm playing in this like slightly more straightforward style. On a 10 deuce deuce, my hand gets the showdown, I think, fairly well against the uh, open limping range, so I don't see too much reason in betting. Um, now that I hit the ace, I'm just going to value bet, but I think I think uh, just checking it down and taking a free showdown is, is going to be pretty good. On the, on the bottom left, 
Um, D Dow Rock opens the small blind. I think it's going to be a fairly standard call on the big blind. I don't give up too much in this spot. Like I have position rest of the hand. If he wants to open too many hands and play out of position, um, that's going to be really bad for him because I'm pretty aggressive post flop and it's going to be pretty difficult for him. Like in this spot where I pick up a gutter, uh, I'm going to be raising the flop, even though I don't represent all that much except for I guess pocket nines, ace nine, ace deuce. Um, pocket deuce is it doesn't matter too much it just puts him in a really tough bind and he's not going to be able to continue without an ace very often so even if he has a hand like 9-10 pocket jacks or something like that I think he's going to have to fold out of position I still have a gut shot to the nuts as well so um, if he does call I can still hit so I think the raising here is going to be pretty good And he calls. So, like, let's think about what his calling range is going to be. I really think he's going to be folding 9x a ton, pocket 10s a ton, although he may be calling with it. So when he calls that flop, I'm, I think, done with the hand. Um, his calling range is going to be pretty strong, usually going to be, like, ace x, which he's probably not folding. So I don't think there's... Um, I don't think I get enough folds here to continue bluffing the turn. Uh, I was going to shut down a ton when he called the flop, but I thought I got enough flops on the or enough folds on the flop to make the play profitable. Once he calls, I I think I'm done with the hand unless I spike a three in the river. He's timing down for checking too. It's likely he wants me to check back. Has a hand like a six, a seven, maybe like a ten. Doesn't want to be put into a tough decision. So, um, yeah, he probably has one of those hands once he acts like that. And again, I don't see any value in checking. So he did have a six. Uh, I wasn't going to get any folds on the Turner River. So I think I played the hand fine. On the top right, I get called by um, a short stack player from the button. I'm not c-betting that board. I really think that hits a huge part of his uh, pre-flop flatting range, so I'm not going to continue. Uh, the 10 hits a turn. Again, I really am just going to try to show this hand down and, and beat Weaker aces, hands like king jack, king queen, that type of thing. Um, I don't see any reason in betting. Once he bets, I think it's actually kind of close because I think he's probably going to bet a lot of his pairs on the turn. Um, so when he does bet here, I think he shows up with a hand like king queen, king jack, jack queen a lot because he's probably betting. Um, the board is pretty coordinated, so he's probably betting a lot of his like pair plus gutter on the on the flop or the turn. So I don't think his line makes too much sense here, especially when he pots it. If he's value betting a ten or a nine, I think he's going to make like two fifty to two sixty something like that. So um, calling here is close. I think it's probably slightly plus EV. I need to be good here. I don't know, like thirty something percent of the time, and I think it's going to be slightly higher than that. So it's. A close decision. I decided to call. He has king eight, so hooray for me. Picked off a bluff. Okay, in the bottom right, um, pocket deuces just never improves, so it's like the most standard fold ever when someone does bet. Even if I felt he's bluffing a lot of the time, um, or nearly every time, I'm still folding there because my hand just doesn't do well against um, even his bluffs. Some games they open up 5-3 off. Um, wouldn't do it there against a raise anyway, but 
I think playing straightforward and tighter is going to certainly be a lot more profitable when you're still um, an intermediate player. Uh, ideally, too, on the top right table, um, I'm not going to quit this video, so I kind of don't game select too much. I don't really like choosing like good games with huge fish for the most part. Uh, I'd much rather play in slightly difficult 15 all games to help you guys improve, get into slightly better spots. But the top right table with the player that had $10, now $5.25 is like a real handicap to me because I just can't open that many hands so normally I'd probably think about quitting that table if he didn't if he didn't uh, bust pretty soon King 10 suited it's somewhat on the loose side I think it's against the button open um, anytime or most of the the boards I hit let's say it's like King 9-3 Ten seven four, like those type of boards are the type of boards that people see about a ton. So there's some extra value in, in calling with a hand like this. I think it's slightly too weak to three bet for value, uh, too strong to three bet as the bluff. So I think folding is okay, calling is okay as well. I don't know anything about the the button opener, but in if the player was very good, I'm probably just folding it. I'm not going to make that as assumption about the average 50 and all player, so I think calling is, is close, but okay. And on the bottom left, I open, get called by the small blind. On a 610 diamond diamond board, he checks, I check back. Pretty much content with kind of taking the showdown. Um, if he leads the turn, I'm probably calling. Uh, at 50 now, I don't think they're going to lead turn, lead river too often if he had a hand like with no outs like king, queen, or not no outs, but hand like king, queen, or seven, eight, eight, nine, or something like that. I think he, he leads turn, checks river way too often on average. So I'll probably call turn and then check back river. If he checks here, um, I think I usually check back. I occasionally bet here because I don't think he's checking an ace twice, so my hand is just best most of the time. Uh, so I could sneak in a small bet some of the time, but uh, checking is certainly the standard play. And hooray for me, hit Broadway on the top right against the fish. Hopefully he rebuys or leaves the table and like a full stack plays. So I can start opening more like buttons. Uh, folded a six, the top right. Uh, normally that's like a hundred percent open for me, but um, dead end street is playing thirty two twenty three. So slightly on the looser side, and I think opening a six against like a tighter range where they're just going to be folding their blinds really often. I think it's pretty standard against this player. He's probably going to call a ton. He hasn't three bet yet, but Seems like the type that's going to be through betting a ton. I think I think just folding the button occasionally is okay as well. Um, kind of iffy. Yeah, cool. I decided I think to check on the bottom left when people open the small blind, they kind of auto fire. 100% uh, of the time, like on any flop, when the big blind calls, I think it's a mistake. The mis the big blind here, when they call the position, they're going to be able to, um, they're really going to be able to like float and bet turns, they can raise your own flops and that type of thing. 895 hits Rick James. Um, pre-flop calling range like quite a bit like any six any seven he's never folding and he can bet those on the turn any pair he's never folding so I mean here's a spot where I think people bet too often on that type of board where check folding is in my opinion the best play 
occasionally you can bet boards like this, um, but I wouldn't do it at like 100% frequency like a lot of players do. Okay, so I accidentally just hit the stop button, so I had to save it, so there might be like some mild interruption there, hopefully it works out. But anyway, as I was saying, um, yeah, I, I like a check fold here. And when it gets checked through, um, here's a spot where you can start bluffing. Uh, the a lot of your perceived checking range is going to be like ace king king queen something like that that has showdown value. A lot of his uh, check back range is going to be five x eight x six x seven x. So if I do bet here or like pocket threes pocket fours, if I do bet here, um, if the board doesn't get too much more coordinated, like a six a seven. 10 are all kind of bad. Any other card I'm probably barreling because I think he's folding to a turn and river bet. Um, that said, I don't think he's folding when the <laughs> that particular river comes if queen hit, if a 2, a 4, 5, 3, um, or not a 5, a 2, 3, ace, king, queen, jack. All those, all those cards I'm going to be um, barreling. The king is probably the most one of the worst cards to barrel there because I think he's calling with any eight, any nine, probably like pocket sevens, pocket sixes as well. So um, I like my plan on the hand. Uh, it just didn't work out. I like the check on the flop. I like the bet on the turn. And I like the check fold on the river. I would have bet a ton of rivers there, just not that one. Uh, so he snap calls the player on the bottom right. He has a small, smallish stack. I think he started the hand with. Looks like about 25 big blinds. Uh, I flop top and bottom pair. Going to be easy raise on the flop, easy get it in on the turn. Uh, even though the flush hit, there's $8.80 left in a $14 pot. So, yeah, definitely just going to snap column or snap ship if he checks. So he has a pair, nice hand. Um, actually, I don't think he played it too bad. Like bit calling there is okay, uh, but he's probably got to check fold the the turn once the flush hits because he's losing all my made hands and to any draws, all the draws got there. So that's gonna be pretty bad. Uh, on the top right, nine seven suited is a pretty good three bet bluffing hand. It's a hand I'd usually call with in position. Out of position, I don't think we can quite profitably call with. So it, I, I think it is profitable, profitable to three bit bluff it. The most, the best candidate to do so. Um, so I, I like to do so here. I wouldn't do it all the time, but occasionally mixing up your your three betting range, and this is the really good hand to do it with. I decided to do it. Flop seven eight king. Here's a spot where when you bet, like. I don't think any better hands fold, or actually do, like 8x pocket 9s might fold. Uh, worse hands don't call that often except for 9-10, 5-6, uh, but I don't want to check fold here. I think I have the best hand a ton, so I'm just probably going to make a $7 bet and reevaluate on a lot of turns. He calls pretty quickly, and... Um, I pick up a heart draw. It's pretty close here, actually. I think between betting and uh, check raising. Check raising is pretty good, although I don't think we get too many folds. He might bet 15 and then fold with complete air. All of his air has equity against us. We pick up the dead money. Uh, betting is pretty good because it gets him to fold out 8x, pocket 9s, pocket 10s, pocket jacks, pocket queens. He'll never fold a king here. Um, and against his calling range, we have like 13 or 14 outs. So we still have a fair amount of equity. So combine that with the, the fold equity. Uh, I, think, I think betting is probably slightly better, although check raising is okay as well. If stacks were deeper, I'd much rather check raise. So he shoves. I'm obviously calling. I actually can't see his hand. And it looks like I got there. 
Um, we'll see his hand in a second. I'm actually super curious because he had a queen. He had ace queen, so um, nice hand, I guess. I bet nineteen dollars he had um, a little bit over a min raise left. So yeah, no fold equity there. It's pretty much a snap fold with ace queen when I double barrel that board. Not super sure what he was thinking because um, the nine like wasn't a good card for me to continue barreling. Uh, most players at fifteen dollars just kind of check fold when they when they do fire in a three bit pot. So and he didn't have much equity against anything. So I'm not really uh, sure about his play. Actually, I am sure. I just don't think it was very good. Uh, pick up top pair, top kicker uh, on the turn in the bottom right. I think betting here is going to be okay. And bet folding, like he's never, he's never check raising with the worst hand, um, except for like semi bluffs. But for the most part, my hand is dead to any hand he check raises. But his calling range, he's probably call continue calling with any ten. He's calling with worse jacks. A lot of the flush draws, so I think bet folding is probably the best line in that spot. Uh, on the bottom left, I flop a gutter. Uh, Ace two doesn't show down as well as a hand like ace queen. I think I'd be more inclined to check back ace queen and bet ace deuce. And I have the gutter as well, so while well, usually, not usually, occasionally I check back ace high, ace deuce is probably a better candidate to see bet. And we're approaching the um, first half of this video and we'll check out a hand or two and then uh, I'll do the audio in a little bit and release the second half of this video next week. So I get three bet by the player that went nuts with ace queen. Pretty standard fold when I get squeezed in that spot. I get three bet again by that player. He's maybe tilting or like a maniac or something. He's kind of going nuts here. Uh, King 10 suited. Definitely going to be defend. And if I flop top pair, hopefully I get to stack him. Uh, I'm never folding top pair when I call with this hand. And I'm not folding against a player that appears to be tilting and is probably going to make a lot of mistakes after the flop. Uh, flop an open ender with um, a king over card. He seems like the type that's going to like check raise that type of board with well he did it earlier with like no pair no draw so that was pretty bad so I don't want to lose my equity and I don't really want to get it in here either um, I pick up a pretty cool turn card open ender king over card and now a flush draw it looks like he's checking back something with like ace high so uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get him to fold his ace high and he calls and I hit the river when he calls the turn, um, I, I doubt he's folding the uh, river. He's going to have like pocket 10s, jack x, something like ace 10. He's probably going to make a hero call. It looks like he's tilting. So I opt to just bet on the bigger side because I expect him to call most of the time. And sure enough, he does. Hooray me. Um, paying attention in those spots is pretty cool because once I figured out that he wasn't folding, I just opted for you know, an extra eight big blinds, which really adds to your win rate. So we had ace jack there. Um, this will be 
yeah, this will conclude the first part of the 15-0 part of my Tide Aggressive series. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Second part coming up next week. Take it easy, guys.